It's time for our weekly segment with John McClain of the Houston Chronicle, brought to you by Pioneer Steel and Pipe, where customer service is their main focus and best in metal, steel, and pipe for large or small projects, with two locations in Waco and Bryan, family owned and operated since 1943. Pioneerboys.com, well, Hall of Famer John McClain with us on Tuesdays, Baylor alum, Waco native. Join us. Not much has been going on in the NFL, huh? John, thanks for your time. We'll get to the weekend from hell as a Baylor fan. But uh, Deshaun Watson, the Texans, in the end, based on all of what they knew or what they could do, based on what Deshaun Watson wanted to do, did Nick Casario come out of it about as well as he could? I think Nick, Nick Casario did a fantastic job. He had no say in where Watson went. He could have had five number one picks and five starters offered by Carolina, New Orleans, or Atlanta. He couldn't have taken it if Watson said no. So that's what happens with the no-trade clause. So Watson wanted to go to Cleveland. They got six draft choices. They got ones in each of the next three years. They got a four this year, a three in 2023, and a four in 2024. And I think under the circumstances when he was negotiating – with handcuffs on, that uh, that was as good a haul as he could have gotten. Now he's got to make sure that they make the right pick and the coaches develop the players. John, it appeared, you know, there were some rumors about Laramie Tunsil wanting out of town. He's he's negated those and said he wants to be in Houston. Does it, does it seem now that, uh, like Nick Cazero used the word clarity for both sides, that now that this is cleared up, the players that are there are, will be more entrenched in wanting to be Houston Texans? Well, they, they uh, like, Tunsil didn't want out, Paul. They were thought they would trade him. He only played five games last year because of a broken thumb, and they thought he could have come back at the end of the season, but he said he was too injured, and they had other players playing with casts on. But they have a new offensive line coach, George Warhop. This is the eighth job he's had in the NFL as a line coach. He wanted to keep Tunsil because if they traded him, they would need four new starters in the offensive line. Right now, they have their tackles back. They also have a right guard, A.J. Ken. They signed as a free agent from Jacksonville, where Warhop was the last three years. So uh, they don't have as many big needs in the offensive line. They still need, to me, a left guard and a center instead of almost across the board. They need a running back desperately. They need a pass rusher, and they are destitute at safety, which gives them several options with a third overall pick if they keep it and don't trade down. They also have the 13th overall pick, and it wouldn't surprise me, Paul, if they didn't trade down on both of those, but at least one of them for sure. John, I want to go back uh, to last week. I think it was after we had talked to you a little while uh, later that the Devontae Adams news broke yep. with the uh, the Raiders and the Packers making that big deal. What were your thoughts on, on Devontae Adams heading to Las Vegas? I was amazed because I was watching on NFL Network and ESPN all these former uh, players talking about – one of them actually said, a former player, this makes Derek Carr – the best quarterback in the division. And I'm like, my God, you must have been hitting the head so much, too much. First of all, Devontae, let me go back. Aaron Rodgers won a Super Bowl without Devontae Adams. And in games without Adams, they were uh, 7-0 and and averaged 31 points a game. I think they'll be all right. People are acting like Adams made Rodgers. No, give me a break. Would Devontae Adams put up those gaudy numbers all these years if he was playing with lesser quarterbacks? Of course he wouldn't. Not many receivers can be quarterback proof. DeAndre Hopkins was a good example. But Adams was from Fresno State. He and Derek Carr have been good friends since they were in college together. He wanted to go back there. He got his wish, more power to him. Now in a deep receiver draft, the Packers can get uh, at least one really good one in the first round, and I'm guessing they'll take another one in the subsequent round, and Aaron Rodgers will be happy. John, uh, the Cowboys' Lyle Collins is on his way to Cincinnati. Obviously, we knew about the Randy Gregory. We talked to you about that as well. And and uh, and, and they kind of seem like they're a little bit stuck in New They did get James Washington, right, Paul? And then who's the other player they got? It was a one-year deal. Well, Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler. And it seems like they've kind of – 
you know, this they have not reached out and signed big time free agent names. Do they do they are they gonna stay status quo? Well, they're not trying to win March. Some teams are trying to get win March and get their fans and the media all excited, like Jacksonville, and then they peter out when it gets into the regular season. I think the Cowboys are being very wise. Think about all the years the Cowboys went out and signed big name players or spent big money. Everybody got so excited about it yep. when the season came, it didn't mean jack. I think uh, what they've done, I think, is what they should do. Fill in. They've got enough stars. They've got firepower. They still have needs, and they have the draft. I still think they're the favored by far in the NFC East. John, do we want to help? I've got some other football okay. questions okay, before you get ahead. to Baylor. Uh, Matt Ryan in Indianapolis, John. Yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts on this has been a crazy carousel of quarterbacks, so, and it just continues on now? Never seen anything like this, Craig, <laughs> ever. Now, Matt Ryan, last season, 20 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, a 90 rating. Not very impressive. But, you know, Julio Jones was traded. Calvin Ridley, his best receiver, did set out because of mental health issues. Now, uh, if he had come back, Russell Gage, his best receiver, signed with Tampa, and uh, Ridley's suspended for the year. He's got one receiver, Kyle Pitts. If they'd have gotten Deshaun Watson there, trading all those picks, it would have been hard to fill in around him. Where he went to Cleveland, where they have a lot of talent. Ryan's with a much better team. But did he have a bad season because of lack of talent? Or did he have a bad season because he's nearing the end of the line? And we'll find out. But it certainly has made the Colts more interesting considering they had no quarterback. And now if I'm Baker Mayfield or Jimmy Garoppolo, and it's not going to happen with Garoppolo because it's the same division. But if I'm Mayfield, I want to go to Seattle. They have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett at wide receiver. They have Noah Fant, number one pick in 2019, who came in the trade for Russell Wilson at tight end. And they just re-signed their running back, Rashad Penny, who had 132-yard average per game over the last five games, second most yards in the NFL to Jonathan Taylor over that period. They got a prolific offense, but they also have Drew Locke, which means they need somebody else. So Matt Rule and Carolina struck out, huh? Does, do you feel like they're just going to wait for Jimmy Garoppolo now, or that's kind of their the de facto prize there? Well, there's a story out of there that uh, they didn't want. They don't want Baker Mayfield, and uh, Garoppolo's coming off shoulder surgery on his throwing shoulder, so he's not going to be traded anytime soon. I could see the 49ers waiting until the trade deadline until he's 100% healthy and then trading him to a team that's lost its quarterback and thinks it's going to the Super Bowl. It wouldn't surprise me. And this is amazing. I've been reading today about Malik Willis. Malik Willis had his pro day today, and he tore it up. He threw some great passes in his shorts, in his T-shirts, with nobody pressuring him and nobody covering the receivers, and yet everybody – was breathless, just like the combine. It just blows me away the way people will fall in love with guys with no pressure and nobody covering the receivers. So be that as it may, I think Malik Willis is going to be the first quarterback taken. Now, they think he needs a year to develop. Would Carolina go with Sam Darnold, take him sixth overall, and let him sit out a year? If that's the case, and the owner, David Tepper, says, okay, Matt, I'll give you this year and one more year because everybody says he's on the hot seat. If he's got to go with Sam Darnold again after Matt Rule pushed for him and traded high picks for him, that could be the kiss of death. But I w wouldn't be surprised at all to see him be the first quarterback off the board to the Panthers. John, I, I saw a note to Corey Coleman to Kansas City. I called him. Uh, he was on a plane, in fact, about to depart, told him to hang up the phone. He's headed to Kansas City to sign. Uh, kind of a maybe one more chance. He's had some of those. And uh, your thoughts about can an organization make a guy obviously better than what's happened to him the last, well, hadn't played for a year, the years two or three prior to that? Did he take his 2,000 pair of shoes with him? <laughs> I remember when he was Tennessee, they were just amazed at how many pairs of shoes he had. Uh, I don't think it'll it'll help him. 
they got J- Juju Smith Schuster. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he was starting way down the depth chart. But as you guys know, Patrick Mahomes makes a lot of receivers look good. That's the perfect place for a receiver trying to make a comeback. Uh, well, I guess now is now about we, time. Well, we're trying to, trying to well, maybe trying to run just, out of time. We didn't have to ask you about it. But good God, John, what a weekend of hell. I'm so happy for Jerome Tang, even though he's in the conference. But I thought he would have gotten a job years ago. I bet he turned down some opportunities. Think what that's going to be like when the Wildcats play the Bears. The North Carolina, as you guys know, wasn't an eighth seed. Terrible start. Great comeback. I can't complain about it. It was the women that shocked me. I watched that game. It was like they were out there, didn't care. That was the one that blew me away. John, thank you. Thank you, guys. Rick on. John McClain, Houston Chronicle. Great Hall of Famer. Does numerous shows throughout the week, and we're proud to be one of them. Came with us when we moved here and started this show in April of 2020. All right, uh, Armstrong, you know, last night we were discussing